a prairie restoration project on Rice University's campus, which I've seen is outstanding. Well, we're still working on it. Yeah. Working on it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Cassie graduated with uh, BS and MS in biology from Texas A&M, uh, Corpus Christi, and a PhD from Rice University in biochemistry and cell biology. Ooh. <laughs> yes, right. everybody yes. said. <laughs> <laughs> personal note, she's a wonderful person, hardworking, instrumental in getting this, this conference uh, put put together and, and passionate about prayer. So I'll leave it to you. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Thanks, y'all. I hated to take keep you away from pollinators because I know that's like a super <laughs> interesting talk. So fortunately we're uh, filming everything, so we'll be able to watch the other talk. So uh, this is something that I never get to say when I'm teaching, and that is get out your cell phones. <laughs> so you will be using your cell phone for this talk. This is gonna be completely interactive. Um, and I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be gleaning some information from you guys, because like Jaime was talking to us earlier, what's really important for us forward as successful prairie conservationists is that we have to start working with one another. And those steps have already been taken, right? We're all here in this room today and what I'm hoping to do is that through my talk, I'm going to uh, encourage some more interaction between us that we may not have had when we first originally walked in the room. So I know in my original talk, I said I was going to talk about marketing. I am a little bit at the very end of this, but I'm going to get there. So just bear with me a little bit. So um, the new title of my talk is Social, Rest Social Restoration Defragmenting Our Conservation Community. So Jaime already took a little bit of my thunder that, that I was going to start out with, so I won't belabor this too much. But by the very fact that you walked in the doors outside, you are officially a part of a prairie movement. Um, and don't worry, this isn't the movement that your parents worried about, you know, the people with the long hair, the flowers on the mm -hmm. hair, and the Birkenstocks, and you got to go to Colorado to talk to that kind of grass. It's not, it's not that kind of movement. <laughs> this is a movement based on some sort of attachment, a feeling, an emotion that you have had in connection to an amazing ecosystem, the prairie. We are all here because there is something about the prairie that has drawn us here. The sound of the grass in the wind, migratory birds coming in for the first time. Um, for me, it's amphibians calling at night in the ephemeral pools. There's something about this ecosystem that has brought us here. The other sad component of this, however, is that we are here because we are losing this ecosystem. And so the point of my talk is not to belabor any of this. We all realize that this is the reality of the situation. Um, but I just wanted to put this historic kind of, uh, this map that plots out the historic range of the coastal prairie goes all the way up here to, to Lafayette. And I just did some back of the envelope calculations and anyone that is really into the prairie landscape stuff will probably correct me on my really fuzzy math. But based on the information in the Paradise Lost pamphlet that cited that there's about nine, there was nine million acres of prairie, there's only 1% of that left. So I had to put things in a visual perspective for me to kind of wrap my, my brain around them. So I did a little bit of math and I estimated that that 1% is only about three times the size of Lafayette. So that is not a whole lot of this ecosystem that's left. So again, that's one of the things that brings us all here today is that we really care about this ecosystem and we want to save it. So again, the purpose of my talk is not to talk about the kind of the a biology and the reasons why that the coastal prairie is disappearing, but we're probably all familiar with this one threat and that is habitat fragmentation. The reason I wanted to mention habitat fragmentation is because it's a really good example of kind of what is not necessarily happening on purpose in our community, but something that just is. And that is we are a lot of independent groups working kind of in our own little worlds, uh, trying to solve this problem. And as the pace of development increases, as the pace of road development increases, we cannot continue to work in our own little realms. We have to start working more carefully with one another. Just like the theory of, uh, or just like how most conservationists see these ecosystems, we say that we need to make corridors between them to increase genetic diversity. We need to make uh, continuing between them so we can make sure that animals can transfer from one place to another. We need to do the same thing. We need to build corridors between our groups and facilitate more communication between our groups so we can better uh, attack, uh, I guess, this growing threat of the loss of this ecosystem. So that's where I start 
talking and we start interacting. So if you haven't uh, logged into the Wi-Fi yet, uh, please do, and the code's here as well if you didn't catch it on the very first slide. It's not working. It was working for you a second ago. What's the password? This is the password. Oh, yeah, so, so you, have to, you have to put in the dash as well. So it's capital NWRC, and you have to put the dash in, and then main C, capital C, zero. It's not an O, it's a zero, and then lowercase N F. This isn't some clever way to get like all my information with the virus, is it? <laughs> no, no, it's not, it's not. <laughs> yeah, this, this isn't that, that sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not that technologically savvy either, although that's a really good idea. But really, we don't have to use that. We can just use data. Yeah, you can just use yeah, you can use your cellular data too. But I don't want to suck in anybody's cellular data plan, so oh no. She's gonna steal your information regardless of which one you use. Yeah, oh yeah. Alright, everybody good? So go to this website once you're um, Logged on? Minty.com? I don't know how to go to that. Hmm? I don't know how to go to that. <laughs> go to, you just said browser. How do you go to that? <laughs> Method, and then, oops, I just disconnected it. You'll have to do that again. I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong button. So just put the password in again? I'm sorry, I just made it go back. <laughs> and then go to your uh, browser. So what kind of phone do you have? So go to, like, I don't know if you're using Internet Explorer or something like that. You just go to however you get to the Internet and put in this. Has everyone gone to the Minty site? I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I was just waiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what I wanted to do, um, and I'll get started. If anyone's having trouble, I can walk around and, and get you all set up. What I wanted to do is actually survey our conservation group. So I'm eventually going to get to the point where I'm talking about a marketing survey that CPP is currently putting together to assess uh, the, I hate to use the term the general public, but that's what I mean, assess people outside of the conservation community to see how we can better reach out to people that are not us to get them encouraged and engaged in prairie conservation. But in order for us to successfully do that, we need to figure out where we are coming from. We all are into prairies, but why are we into prairies? Right? What are our what are our biggest fears? What are our expertise? What are the things that we know that someone else might know? So the next series of questions is going to ask you guys some uh, just basic questions on this, and then what I want us to do is then work together to kind of talk about what we can come up with. Everyone clear? Everyone good with their phone? Yes? No? Okay. Not yet. Oh, yeah, I've already done this while I was talking. That's awesome. <laughs> so what I want to take away from this is I want y'all to get a good idea of us. Who are we? We might actually find some surprises, you know, as to what we think um, our focus should be in prairie conservation. Oh, that's really interesting. So most, look at all these Louisiana people. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yes. I live two places. Which do you prefer? Choose the best. Choose the one you live the most. <laughs> Wait a second. I don't know of any place called Lu Louisiana. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't smell very well. <laughs> I, have, I could do biochemistry, but I can't spell. I'm sorry. You found my biggest weakness. That in like long division, I'm also not really good at. Please don't, don't have me do any long division. I'm one of those city dwellers from Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all ready for the next question? So what kind of people are we? What's your role? Can we do more than one? 
I think it's supposed to be one. A couple of them you can do more than one. We'll get to those in a second. Choose the best one. <laughs> I know, you're having to do a lot of introspective thinking after lunch. I'm really sorry. Who am I? Deep thoughts. <laughs> No rule yet, but I want one. Yeah. <laughs> How long well, has this software been around? Uh, it's pretty cool. new. Yeah, it's pretty new. Yeah, isn't it cool? It's really like the Yeah. Define conservation practitioner. Um, anybody that's already working with a conservation group, I tried to make it. I didn't want to have like a million things on the bottom. Right, right. Are you already doing well, conservation? Are you getting like, paid to do it? Yeah, you're getting paid to do it. Yeah, yeah. You're getting paid to do it. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the reasons I wanted to put this, this, this category here is that there's a lot of people that want to help us and work with us, and a lot of times they don't get a voice. So I wanted to make sure that those folks are um, like seen here today so we can potentially connect with them and get them with some groups that, that need their help. All right, ready for the next one? It's kind of fun, huh? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think I can work. Because I need a phone, I'd make this one work. You want to use mine? Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. You don't have an all of me lunch. I didn't want to give you too many options. That's no fun. I want to learn about curries, but I don't want to learn about water. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. This is what I want to see. Right? The majority of us want to make some connections with other groups. That's amazing. <laughs> but really, no lot. I guess all the while, people are listening about or learn about <laughs> All right. Awesome. So next set of questions. If I can use Jaime's computer here. Yes, yeah, so, sorry. I'm using I'm using the free version. So <laughs> so we had to put in the code a couple of times. I apologize. So just put it in again? Yes. It's like that candy crush question. Yeah. <laughs> Is everybody able to get in? Yeah, sorry, you have to put in a couple of codes. I apologize for that. Space between the numbers? No space. Yeah, the space is just there so you can see the numbers clearly. <coughs> Have you ever used this? No, it's great. It's fun. Wow. I'm shocked at that. Look at all these educators. It's awesome. Watching and learning. We're taking over. But <laughs> 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 can an educator be a final expert? Sure. Pick the best answer. Make the best answer. Your good skew my standard deviation, man. What's going on? How can one answer be going down? Because more people, more people are. Yeah. He's a candy answer. Awesome. So, just out of curiosity, the folks with expertise I'll mention here. What expertise do you have? Awesome. Federal programs, money baby. Ooh, money baby. I should have put that on there. <laughs> Everybody wants to talk to the money baby. <laughs> All right. What do you guys want to learn more about? So what I am going to do um, while you are answering all these questions, I can actually put the, these results. Um, I'm going to put it on the CPP website. So we can just kind of see, have a, like a... A small swath of where we're all coming from. Because again, I think that's really important us moving forward where we are, right? Helps us make decisions as to what we need to do next. What if seeing people make their choices is biasing the Conservation planning, don't we all? <laughs> How we did it to work? 
Grant writing. Technology. Because of this presentation. <laughs> Is that why? Awesome. All right. Last question in this group. And this one I think is actually really important. Who do you need to connect with? These people might actually be here. Maybe not in this room, maybe in the, across the hall. But we need to facilitate y'all getting together. So for those of you that want to connect with the nonprofit, why? Money. But money? Not. I'm just in nonprofit groups, I guess. But not schools. Um. I mean, because that's true. I probably should have put another one up there for. Right. Right. Community. The other. So nobody wants to wants to connect with environmental consultants. That's interesting. Brian, <laughs> get out. We don't need any help from those guys. We already know everything about the environment. Yeah. <laughs> so other enthusiasts. What do you mean? You just want to meet other people that do the same things that you do? Yes. Cool. We'll have to make sure to get you guys hooked up today. Yeah, other ideas. I those five people looking for a nonprofit, please come talk. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, y'all want to do one more of these? <coughs> All right, so this next group I think is actually really interesting. This next group of questions, I've entitled it, What Are We Up Against? I'm actually really curious to see what the, our prairie groups think are our biggest threats. And I have a couple of examples. So the, the way this, this works is that you can actually, it's on a sliding scale. So on the do this left and right. On the left hand side, it's not a huge concern, um, but on the right hand side, it's a big concern. So I'm just curious what y'all think are some of our big concern to us, like personal thing we want to work on. Right. Well, do you are you more concerned about the loss of biodiversity, or are you more con concerned about like water quality? And you can say all of them are a big concern. But I just thought this would be maybe interesting to see if different people had a different perspective on some of the some of these issues. Can you step on the line? No, no, I can't either. The chain never let me go. So I think this is no I'm not surprised that figured loss of biodiversity would be the biggest concern, but what does that say about our community that we're not worried about the economic benefits? Is this something we need to kind of think about? I think it is. You know, as we approach other groups, as we talk to developers who are also competing for the same land, that would probably be their primary want and desire out of this, right? So when we are serving, when we're talking to these people, trying to collaborate with these people, we need to keep that in mind, that we don't care about the economic benefit, but they do. So I think it's really important that we are kind of aware of this, correct? What else? Anything else here anyone thinks is interesting? It mean we're, we, we don't think it's important. It's right, it's just not the critical, right, it's not the absolute most important thing. We understand that. Sure, sure. I mean, I would point out that a lot of funding for state agencies come from hunters and stuff like that. Right. Oh yeah, like that's unlimited, and there's lots of groups, absolutely. And I would also point out in terms of loss of economic benefit, um, there's a real question about whether Houston is sustainable at this point from a, from a climate change standpoint. We just had 2,000 year floods in two years. We can't build a city in a situation like that. And part of the reason that we're having these issues is because of loss of wild spaces, including prairies. So, you know, economic benefit and cost come in a lot of different senses, uh, some measuring in the, in the tens of millions or billions of dollars in terms of loss of ecosystem services.
I think this one I let y'all answer too on this one, I think. You're welcome. I know. I figure people would be getting angsty at this time. Like, I wanted to answer more than one. So development, for sure, we all agree on that's a definite, huge, pressing threat. But I think this one is really interesting too. Lack of education about prairies, right? So what can we do? We need to think about how we can address that. Um, what else? Lack of interest by policymakers. This probably could fit in with the education piece, right? Lack of education. So this is stuff we need to really think about this. How are we going to start addressing our policymakers? Who's going to start talking to them? Are we going to start writing letters? Are we going to bring them out to prairies? Um, what groups, what prairie groups are going to be willing to connect with these people so we can start having that conversation, right? What else is interesting here? Climate change is kind of cool. Lack of government regulation. Yeah, lack of funding. Actually, I'm really interesting, interested that you guys think that this is low or lower than the other ones. Anybody want to talk about why? The reason I didn't pick it is because that's a consequence of the other stuff. That makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'd like to rank them too. So for this particular question, you actually get to type in your what do you think. So I'm you just curious. I I put So yeah, so I yeah, I scaled it. You only need to put in ten words. And also there is a profanity filter on, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no funny stuff. <laughs> I took one look at these guys in the front row, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna put the profanity filter. <laughs> <laughs> It's six words. Oh, did you type in ten and it shortened it back down? No, they won't go past it. Oh, sorry. Um, you can throw in words together. I'm like, the qualitative data analysis software can have fun with that. Did you say bears? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're scared of lightning. <laughs> Everybody has to enter one? No. I can't get like a little line. Hit submit, but it's yeah, one, one line every now and then. Does anyone get more than five or six words? <laughs> Can I use your words? Are you, are you trying to train the words over there? It's so many letters. It is so many letters. It's not the Oh. So just put it, then we can always add some more. Abbreviate. <laughs> so just you know, so I can continue to talk because I'm a teacher, and that's what we do. We keep talking. Uh, <laughs> uh, where did it go? Shoot, this one. This is why we're all here today, right? Because we don't want this to happen. That things won't change, and I really think it's important that. Somehow, some way, when we walk out of this conference this afternoon, that we make a connection with someone that we haven't talked to before, or a person that does something that we don't know anything about, and we have this some sort of conversation with them about what we can do together to make sure that this is not our reality, right? That things aren't going to change. Mm -hmm. Development's going to win, and loss of habitat is going to win. Um, we can't let that happen, right? That's why we're all here today. So that's kind of why I go through this this exercise. All right, I got one more, and then we'll stop. I know, I know. So my last question to you guys to think about is kind of the state of conservation. And I guess this one's a little prickly, right? I'm not meaning to to be Debbie Downer or um, you know negative or anything, but I think it's important that we we talk to each other about why things aren't working. Because that's how you start the conversation to how we can get things to work. How we're not going to fail at this task. 
So this is anonymous, so you can put in, you know, what you think, right? Yay! <laughs> we need that Katy Perry. Yeah, we do need that Katy Perry. We need personalities out there. That don't have a lot of clothes People on, that also helps. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, it works. She dresses like a fruit. People love her. I don't know. We need her to dress like a bunch grass or something. <laughs> this goes around the chalk. There you go. I think Heidi's presentation went to buy some of the dog. Thanks, Jaime. <laughs> so, lack of public awareness. Interesting. I mean, really, it's the public that dictates what we're able to do. So yeah. If they were behind it, there wasn't, the issue wouldn't yeah. be an issue. Right, right. That's why you need that public figure. Katy Perry. Katy Perry and Bunchgrass. <laughs> <laughs> Surely she'd write a song about Bunchgrass. She has a jungle song, right? <laughs> song. I think that was a lot of time. Yeah, a conservation song. <laughs> okay, now, so she won't do well for Louisiana because on um, one of the football programs, the one that everybody watched on Saturday morning, I can't remember the name at the moment, she was on there and she said something bad about LZ. Oh, oh, I remember that. Yeah, but you guys have Britney Spears. She's so from Louisiana, right? Like, she's from Louisiana. Yeah. She's yeah. from Louisiana. She's 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 all right, next question. Second to last one, guys. Stay with me. So, who needs to be more involved? Who do we need to go shake? Whose door do we need to go knock on? And other than Drew Brees, I'll go knock on his door. Hey, you're giant and scary. Could you help me say prayers? <laughs> JJ Watt seems like a nice guy, though. I could talk to him. Yes, that would have to be a donated effort, though. This is all my one shot. Oh, His price yeah, point is a little bit above what we can afford. It's only one. Yeah. I put all of them. I mean, I put all of them. No, you, should, you can slide all of them. You should be able to slide all of them. Pick one. Number five. It's public. I believe in people. Public. I know, honestly, I'm really surprised. I thought that most of us would say the government needs to be more involved. No. Is anybody surprised? Am I the only one that's surprised? Well, well, they've gotten involved. Have you been running for bottom leaders? The, the government actually does do a lot and nobody knows about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why I, you know, having the government do more that the public doesn't know about doesn't, in my mind, help mm -hmm. our cause at all. Right, right. That's right. why that's yeah. we're here. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, in all fairness, some of us are government, so we're like, right. like oh, I'm, I'm here. So. Yeah, I'm doing stuff. <laughs> I should do more. But you know, but it's funny when you talk to the public, that's what they say, oh, the government should be doing more. Right? Or, well, depending on who you talk to in the public. There's some people that think the government should just blow up and go away, but. <laughs> I think he's in bad mood. He didn't like the government at all. Now they love him. Yeah, funny that. Funny that. Awesome. So, the public. So, so far I've seen the theme. It's like education, getting more public awareness, um, getting the public more involved in this. So, how are we going to address this, guys? We need to start thinking about our next steps then. So, this is the very last question, I promise. This is way fun for me because I'm not having to do much or having to do stuff. That's why I love teaching my classes. <laughs> my micro students just love it. You're going to make us think? Oh. Well, I think I know what the answer is going to be. Communication. That's why she's talking about marketing. I have to do two. I wonder if the data sharing, low data sharing, it's not that we don't think it's important, it's that we think that we're already doing okay. Hmm. Yeah? Because the question is, how can we do better? Okay. Yeah, yeah, are you thinking of data sharing as far as like scientific information, or are you thinking of data sharing in something like 
I mean, if we did well, more on Facebook, we would probably get more of the public. That's communication with the right. public. Right. So it's going to be it's all going to be now. Um, now it's, well, at least for us, So again, yeah, communicating with the public is something that we need to start doing better. And this is actually, if I was actually doing this, I would be um, packing my books onto the inclusivity. Because I really think we need to start broadening the people that are in this room with us, right? We really need to start reaching out to people that we normally haven't before. Um, one of the things I'm working, trying, my, my big goal right now is to get my community college involved. Um, Houston Community College is the most diverse institution of higher education um, in the United States. Um, I am the only Caucasian person in my classroom. Um, and I think that is really important that I start reaching out to my students that are from much more diverse backgrounds and start bringing them into this conversation because they're impacted too, just like the rest of us. Water quality, um, biodiversity, all these things are really important for them as well. And they just might not realize it yet. So. I think this, for me, is very, very, very important. And that, I guess, goes along with communicating with the, the public. Awesome. Can I, um, this, this is something I hear over and over from people in, in our community, and this is Master Naturalist, and it's that we don't feel like we know enough to be that representative. And so it's like, know your story, but then be like, oh, but, but I don't know, I'm not an expert, so I can't be that representative out there bringing it to the public, so I'm hoping that Either we figure out a way to we easily educate ourselves, or that we feel okay with wherever we're at. Well, one thing I've always heard, and this is, uh, sorry, this is Vincent, but if you know anything and you're speaking to the public, right. you're reading to the line. Right. Yes. I mean, you're right. doing, you know more about it, so much more about them, whether you think you do or not. You, you know so much more than they are doing. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I, I agree with you. I'm just telling with you yeah. what I hear, and you can't just tell somebody that. They're like, oh, I can't represent that. Well, yeah, you can. Yeah, that's why the goal of the Master Naturalist programs is to say that. people did not feel empowered after that. They did not, I mean, let me, yeah. let me, let me uh, address that, because I've actually trained 200 Master Naturalists to be guides, and I've gotten three guides. Huge waste of, it's not a waste of time, it's just a waste of effort on my, on my case, because you're absolutely right. Uh, the general public did a survey of school children um, in the UK, um, kids on average could, could name seven animals. They could, many kids could not name a chimpanzee anymore. That's just where we are. So I think that in terms of Master Naturalists in Texas, I've been teaching the program for 15 years. One of the things that they told us when we get all these teachers and conservation workers, we've got conservation workers, but very few teachers. And it's because um, uh, once you get past 40 years old, I'm convinced, it's very hard to convince somebody that if somebody asks them the name of a plant and they don't know it, they won't look like a fool. It's almost impossible. So I'm changing tactics. I'm actually not training master naturalists as guides anymore because I think it's a wasted effort on my part. I'm training high school kids and college kids because they don't know enough to know what they don't know and they will go for it. But I'm trying to pair them up with master naturalists who have the content knowledge and if they see these young people maybe doing it, maybe they will have the courage to do it as well. Yeah, I, I call this the taxonomic Pez dispenser phenomenon. <laughs> yes. Master naturalists are not supposed to be there to spit out names of things. That's a horrible They think tour. they are. Yes, it's a horrible tour. It, it is. It's a terrible tour. That was my talk. But that's what they think. That's what they think. They think that they're supposed to be taxonomic Pez dispensers. And so I don't think you can convince somebody because the fear factor is so high. I think you have to join in with somebody who's brave and will do it, and then they'll get the confidence. But that's worked a couple times with me so far. So now that we've kind of had a good survey of kind of what we're thinking, where we're coming from in this room, I want to take a quick, very, like two or three minutes um, to kind of follow up on the things that we just kind of learned about each other. So. If you will beg my forgiveness, I'm gonna make you go talk to somebody. Sorry, I know this is after lunch, um, but what I want you to do is I want you to find someone in this room that you don't know, and I want you to talk to them about these things that we, these questions we just went over. Uh, <laughs> seriously, find someone, especially especially the government folks in the back. <laughs> They're hiding back there. They're very very nice people. Nobody right? wants money. I want you to talk to someone.
I might really. And that is that, is that um, if you are a dim star, it's hard to see you. So what you need to do is find a bright star to stand next to. And what I mean by that is this. Our, <laughs> our um, like at Katy Perry Conservancy, we have an okay. So I mean, we have we spend a lot of time on social media and we do a lot of stuff. But our reach is, you know, maybe we have 3,200 people on Facebook. Well, the zoo has bajillions, okay? And they have a marketing machine that is literally better than the entire conservation community, except for TNC maybe, combined. So what I'm saying is if you can get a partner, and the zoo has been a really great partner for us to help promote your work, especially if you're a governmental agency and it takes forever to get stuff through your channels. I know that doesn't happen ever. Uh, but if you can get them to work with you and use their machinery, you'll reach, we oftentimes think, well, we have a program, we need to get it through our channels, but our channels are so tiny that even if you got full saturation with your channels, it's not gonna matter too much. But if the zoo puts it on the front of their website, well, then you're in the big leagues. So what I'm saying is try to find entities that have a shared common interest with you, even if that means telling your story, and get it out through their channels like a virus. And uh, we do that all the time. And, be, and that's because we know that sexies are not, per, uh, sex, uh, praise are not sexy to the general public, but a lot of these other institutions, celebrities, that kind of thing, are. Uh, one thing that we did, we're gonna try to save the Deer Park Prairie, is you know, we have a 50, 50 acre patch of grass we were trying to save. We raised $4 million in five weeks. So what I did is I created a meme online and uh, we had a pimple mound. And we said, well, uh, uh, well, how can we monetize that pimple mound? And we said, ah, I know Stephen Colbert does the Stephen Colbert bump. What if we name the, the pimple mound after a Stephen Colbert bump? And what happened, this is really interesting, what happened was we never, and we tried to get on his show, we never got on his show, but around the world, people were putting in their newspapers, will Stephen Colbert save the Deer Park Prairie? Huh. When that happened, we had a flood of donations because people, we were using celebrity to get <laughs> us, even though he never connected. And, but I bet you if we went back and, and did a, a recollection of all the, the donations, we probably got one from New York or South Carolina, where he's from. So what you're saying is we should tell Drew Brees loves coastal prairie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was his name. How would Drew Brees get the football? Yeah, because you know that would require his permission. That did not require Colbert's permission. Right. Name, that does not. Now? And you can't always do that, especially in public agencies. But if you got uh, the Saints to say saving prairies is a breeze, help us. It depends on how good the Saints are doing, too. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, so, got we gotta fix that defense first. I'm gonna wrap up real quick so we can have time for to get set up for the next talk. Um, so uh, I just wanted to mention one more thing um, before I let y'all go, and that is, uh, I'm, I'm sorry if you're expecting like a regular lecture from me this afternoon. Um, I really think it was very important for us to start actually really talking to each other. We talk about communication, communication, and let's talk to each other, and then we don't do it, right? Because you're just, we eat lunch, and then we're gonna go get beer later. And, and then. So hopefully I've broken the ice before the beer rolls out for the social. Um, but it's really important that we really honestly start talking to one another. <coughs> the other thing we need to do, the other piece, is that we need to talk to people outside of our groups as well. So we need to know where we stand so we can effectively talk to people outside of that realm of knowledge, the public, right? So CPP right now is in the process of putting together a marketing survey. And the reason I didn't talk about it at length today is because we're still putting it together and I don't have much to, to tell you about it. Uh, but we think this is gonna be crucially important for us moving forward. We have to figure out what people think about prairies, if they even think about them at all, um, and how we can get them out there. What sort of outdoor recreation do you like? If you had the opportunity to go see birds, would you do it? If you had the opportunity to take your child kayaking, would you do it? We don't know. We, we, ha we base our knowledge of other people on our own perceptions, and that's not the way we need to move forward. We have to honestly understand what they are interested in. So we are in the throes right now of putting together 
uh, not a massive marketing survey, but a very thorough marketing survey, and we're hoping to unroll it in 2017 in Houston and in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and we're gonna make it available to any other prayer group that's interested. So once we get it put together, um, we're gonna disseminate it out to you guys if you're interested in surveying your own populaces, uh, so you can start getting information from the public as well, so we can really start to effectively communicate with these folks. And just one last piece. <laughs> um, I was gonna use kind of a personal example. Um, I know sometimes this collaboration and talking to each other and this sort of stuff seems really cheesy, but I just wanted to give you one personal antidote to prove to you that it works. Four years ago, I was not interested in fairies. I had graduated with my PhD in biochemistry, molecular biology. Um, I took a little bit of time off before I found a job, and I went to a prairie conference. Um, my family was in the process of possibly losing our ranch, and I was trying to figure out anything possible so we could save it. Um, so I saw about this, this conference on prairies, and I'm like, well, our ranch has grass on it. I guess it's like a prairie. I think that's what prairies are. And so I went to this conference, and I was just amazed how amazing these ecosystems are, how incredibly biodiverse they are. When I thought biodiversity, I thought of redwoods. I didn't think of the stuff that was outside that I saw every day when I was driving around Houston. So it completely changed the way I thought about my life, basically. And I'm not in a lab right now pipetting, I'm here talking to you today. So making these connections, communicating this thing, it works. These conversations that you just had in this past five minutes, it works, it's gonna take us somewhere. And we need to make sure that we reach out to all different, different types of people because they are going to fit into this bigger kind of puzzle piece that we're putting together. So we can hopefully defragment our groups and truly honestly get together and save some prairies. So that's just my last piece on this. So thank you guys, if you have any questions. <laughs> We have about two um, minutes for questions, two minutes for break. <coughs> and I will be, if you're interested, I'm going to be putting all this stuff on the CPP website so you can just go back to it and see kind of what our prairie community thinks. And the marketing survey will also be available as well. So, I have a question. Thanks. Sure. Did you save the ranch? No. Oh. Yeah. What was the prairie conference that you went to? Um, it was the Southern Plains of Prairie Conference. What was it called before? State of the Prairie. State of the Prairie oh, Conference. Yeah, at the Houston Zoo. All right.